Today I'm going to be reading from one of my favorite books, the book of James, and it comes from chapter 5 beginning in verse 7. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Somehow, in the modern age, we've become convinced that faster is better. We want dinner in 30 minutes or less. We buy stuff on credit because the thought of actually waiting and saving, well, that's just too painful. And we store up all our favorite TV shows on a TiVo so we can watch them when we feel like it and skip through all the commercials. As a good friend of mine pointed out a while ago, we used to be thrilled when cars went 40 miles an hour. And now we get frustrated if the guy in front of us is only doing 60. We used to think that dial-up internet at a whopping 56K was a technological marvel. And now we get frustrated when our high-speed connection gets hung up on a video once in a while. Whatever seems fast one day is labeled a dinosaur the next, and the pace of life gets faster and faster and faster. And then, when you open the pages of the Bible, you find this word that has almost become a part of a foreign language here in North America, patience. For the life of us, we can't see why anybody would bother waiting for anything. I mean, now you don't even have to leave your house to go shopping. You can buy it online and have it arrive the next day on your doorstep without even having to pick up the phone. But haven't you noticed that with all the hurry and rush, something is missing? Do yourself a favor. Get out an old-fashioned cookbook. You know, the one that your mom or grandma used to have? And make a meal the old-fashioned way. Start from scratch. Use a cast iron pan and cook it in the oven the way they used to do it. And then pop a ready-made store-bought meal in the microwave and put it on the table with your home-cooked feast. Try them both. Be honest. Which one tastes better? You see, some things are simply worth waiting for, and the second coming is one of those things. We might not be able to imagine why in the world Christ would wait another single moment before coming back, but the Bible tells us to be patient. Think of it like a crop in the field. First you plant it, then you water it, and then you watch it grow until it ripens. You might be able to eat the unripe fruit and maybe even get a little nutrition from it, but it tastes a whole lot better when it's ripe. There's a reason Jesus is waiting. He never does anything just for the fun of it, not with the plan of salvation. In the Gospel of John, he tells us that he's preparing a place for us. And I don't know about you, but if Jesus wants a little more time to make it right, to build the kingdom to the best thing possible, to find more people to inhabit those mansions he's building, to save your neighbors, your kids, your spouse, well, that's worth waiting for. And besides, living with a little bit of godly patience not only gives you something better in the long run, it also happens to be a better way to live.